Hi everyone, welcome to Tech News Curator. This is Julian Ho. The global technology industry is still revolving around semiconductors. Who is the master of the jungle? We welcome all the experts to discuss and exchange ideas with us. As discussed in the previous episodes, China's semiconductor autonomy has been advancing, and even the world's popular one trillion men, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang, has named Huawei as a respectable opponent. What's going on? Other than Huawei, the industry is continuously concerned how NVIDIA's own foundry strategies go forward. On the other hand, is TSMC or Samsung stable now, or is there a third player joining the fray? As we discussed earlier, memory chips have gone through an industrial cycle. It has been rumored that system owners believe that if you don't buy now, it may be more expensive tomorrow. Tech News Curator provides you with the highlights of the week and organizes the industry news that you should not miss in the tech industry. First, let's take a look at Huawei's new cell phone SOC with SMIC, which has ignited the back to 5G war and caused discussions in various circles. The question we all want to ask is whether Huawei can really break through the technological barriers set by the US in the midst of a trade war and under the banner of China's semiconductor autonomy. The recent launch of Huawei's NB products with its own PC processor in China's domestic market, claiming that they are built using the advanced 5NM process, has aroused concerns in the IC design industry. We also saw NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang said during a visit to Singapore that Huawei is a strong competitor to NVIDIA in the China market, which means that Huawei's return to the market with products using advanced semiconductor processes has posed a significant threat to other players. We heard from Digitimes about what the chip industry is actually saying. Most IC designers, regardless of regions, have been commenting on Huawei for some time now, and most of them still believe that it is difficult for Huawei to catch up with the leading groups in terms of product competitiveness due to the restrictions imposed by the US Department of Commerce, but a certain percentage of them also recognize Huawei's technical capabilities and development potential. In terms of cell phone sources, the market believes that Qualcomm and MediaTek are likely to be hit the hardest. However, these first-tier IC designers in public and private occasions have said that it seems that there is a gap between Huawei's new SOC process and the existing mainstream technology, coupled with the SMIC yield and mass production capacity is still a fog, even if the Chinese market has expectations for Huawei. But in terms of shipments and technological strength, it is difficult for Huawei's cell phone SOC to compete with the first-tier brands. As for Huawei's Qingyun L5 140 NB for the Chinese market, which uses the Kirin 9006C processor with a 5NM process, since Huawei didn't specify who manufactured the chip, the market has rumored that the processor may be a stock chip that was operated by TSMC before the ban. If it's a stock chip, it will have limited impact on the market. And if not, even if it's built by SMIC's advanced manufacturing process, it will still be in the same situation as a cell phone SOC, with a gap in performance, yield, and mass production capabilities compared to the big international players. But for sure, Huawei's new products have brought some buzz to the market. According to a survey conducted in China, Huawei took the first place in the increasing purchase intention of the most popular cell phone brands that consumers will want to buy in 2024. But Apple products still have an edge in terms of actual purchasing. After all, the inherent flaws in the manufacturing process have affected the performance and power consumption, and it seems that the chips in the Mate 60 series are not at the same level as the chips in the existing flagship models. IC design industry sources admitted that Huawei Hisilicon's design capability and technology accumulation are indeed quite powerful, but the limitations imposed on the manufacturing side also seem to make it difficult for Huawei to compete with international players in advanced process products. However, let's analyze why Jensen Huang gave Huawei such a high rating as an honorable competitor. Industry insiders believe that this is to promote Huawei's ability in chip designs. If we ignore the restrictions imposed by the US on Huawei, such as interference from the process side and the production side, such a statement is indeed not a problem. Of course, for NVIDIA, the success or failure of China's efforts to promote the nationalization of advanced manufacturing processes is not yet known. But on the other hand, there is no way to be sure that Huawei will not take a detour by licensing its technology to other teams or finding a special pipeline of advanced manufacturing processes to launch its high-performance computing HPC products. Supply chain operators admitted that there are many cases of bypassing through third-party companies, but there are three considerations for such an approach. First, whether it can really help Huawei's own mass production. Second, the issue of cost-effectiveness. And third, the issue of stepping on the red line that will be taken into account by the Asian supply chain operators. Regardless of whether it is a technological war or a propaganda war, and regardless of whether Huawei's products can catch up with the big international companies or not, although Huawei can't be said to be returning to the first tier for the time being, Huawei's continuous attempts to push forward and even to break through are indeed in progress. NVIDIA, which named Huawei as its honorable opponent, has been under the spotlight for its recent moves and what strategy is worth noticing recently. After TSMC and Samsung, the two major foundry partners, Intel may also become NV's supply chain. According to news reports, at the UBS Global Technology Symposium held at the end of November this year, NVIDIA openly stated that it hoped to co-produce next-generation chips with Intel. Currently, TSMC is the foundry partner that NVIDIA relies on for its high-end AI GPUs, but the geopolitical risk in Taiwan has always been a variable in the market's assessment of whether NVIDIA's wafers can be supplied in a stable manner. 
NVIDIA's senior management has shown diversified considerations for Foundry partners and has openly stated that TSMC is naturally the best, which also includes Samsung. However, the senior management also hopes to have a third partner. Intel is a potential third partner, but it may also be TSMC's new US plant. As a matter of fact, as early as 2021, after Intel's IDM 2.0 project for the foundry industry, NVIDIA has stated that it is highly interested in investing in Intel. In May 2023, Jensen Huang also told the public that the company had already received Intel's test chip, which was built with a new generation process node, and the result was favorable. Let's analyze NVIDIA's popular high-end AI GPU chips, including the A100, Hone 100, H200, and the future Bone 100, etc. These high computing power GPUs are mostly foundry by TSMC, while NVIDIA's cooperation with Samsung is towards consumer GPUs. As for NVIDIA's senior management statement on the foundry cooperation with Intel, it is still unclear whether it will prioritize high-end AI GPUs or consumer GPUs, or there may be other needs for wafer investment. Regarding NVIDIA's current AI GPU investment, industry sources analyze that after TSMC's US plant goes into mass production in 2025, even if the plant does not plan for advanced packaging capacity, the relevant high-end AI GPUs may theoretically be manufactured in the US through Intel's advanced packaging, which may also be another type of TSMC Intel crystallization cooperation. Intel's choice of aggressive foundry layout in addition to the expected growth in future market demand can also reduce supply chain risks and improve technological competitiveness. From the perspective of NVIDIA's risk diversification, once Intel's technology matures, it will have the opportunity to eat into TSMC and Samsung's existing wafer basi. After looking at the situation of high-end chips, in fact, many mature chips are gradually coming out of the bottom of the industry cycle. Let's track down the memory. Will it be more expensive tomorrow? In fact, memory prices have bottomed out in the second quarter of this year, and in the past six months, market prices have risen strongly. Although the previous downtrend was a rapid decline from the end of 2022, and it is still a challenge for both DRAM and NAND to get back to the break-even point, we have also seen that the price of NAND flash has returned to the level of early 2023 in November. From now on, the anticipation of tomorrow will be more expensive continues to ferment which drives downstream system operators more aggressive in purchasing, and some products are out of stock. How to analyze? We can see that the pace of production cuts adopted by memory manufacturers varies, but the effect of production cuts in the first half of the year has gradually fermented, and previously higher way for inventories have been released one after another. When memory prices were at a low level, upstream manufacturers preferred to reduce the output of granules and switch to wafer supply to lower production costs. However, when the price is high, upstream OEMs tend to supply ICs with wafers, which is favorable for ASP increase. Then there are memory packaging and testing industry pointed out that from the third quarter, rush orders from the memory modules such as Adata, Fison, Team Group, Transcend and other companies appear one after another, with prices continue to rise. The demands for testing in the fourth quarter will be stable or a small increase than in the third quarter. Powertech is Taiwan's memory sealing and testing leader. As we can see, Powertech's November 2023 consolidated revenue reached N6.468 billion, a monthly increase of 6.27% and an annual increase of 7.65%, which ended the 15 consecutive monthly and annual decreases and reached a high point in the past 13 months, which shows that the industry's inventory adjustment has been nearly completed and has led to a rebound in the demand for memory packaging and testing. Fison, which is also a memory controller supplier, also said that based on the total shipments of SSD controllers in November, the total shipments of SSD controllers grew by 30% year-on-year, and the total shipments of PCIe SSD controllers grew by nearly 40% year-on-year, a record high for the same period in history. Overall, NAND storage bit growth rate exceeded 80%, a record high for the same period in history, indicating that overall market demand is gradually picking up. In addition, the stabilization of NAND market prices has effectively stimulated system customers to continue to steadily replenish their inventories according to market demand. It is understood that after the reduction of output by the upstream original manufacturers, the overall order of supply resources has also been dynamically adjusted. The original manufacturer's own brand products, the best profit, the production capacity in hand, will naturally prioritize shipments. The proportion of external NAND sales declined. The supply chain said that some products are currently out of stock. Customers knocked down the first wave of pre-orders, and then to increase the pulling of goods cannot be bought. But what is the industry worried about? Despite the recent strong rise in memory prices, some industry players are concerned that the actual demand for end products is still relatively flat and the upstream price increases are off the hook. This could lead to suppressed demand and with 2024 just around the corner, the trend of price increases in the memory industry is expected to remain unchanged. Let's take a look at some of the niche memory parts. Winbond has gradually increased its crop rate, gradually reflecting the performance of monthly revenue growth. President Pei Ming Chen believes that demands for PCs and cell phones has indeed recovered and expects the fourth quarter revenue to be better than the third quarter, nor Flash is still in the stage of continuous inventory adjustment. For example, Macronix's consolidated revenue in November was NT1.809 billion, a decrease of 16.5% from October and 34.6% from the same period in 2022. 
Macronix said that although the high quality NOR market demand is starting to pick up, but demands from Chinze and Japanese customers are not strong, the overall inventory adjustment time will be lengthened. On the fourth quarter is still a conservative view. Thank you for watching this week's Tech News Curator. Tech News Curator will be aired exclusively on the Digitimes YouTube channel every Wednesday at 9.0 a.m. EST. So please like, subscribe and turn on the little bell to be notified of our updates as soon as they happen. See you next week.